But I want to bring up uh, some of the members of the cast who are here tonight. I'm so excited. Here they are. Joel McHale. And Tom Lennon. Matt Walsh. All the cast. Come on up. Uh, Emmy Rawson. Ronnie Ross. Martin Mull. Rick Glassman. John Daly. John Kimberly. Donald Gleason, Brad Morris, L.B. Yost, Camille Brody, Michael Benjamin, cast. Um, I also, uh, we, this is who we have room for up on the stage, but I want to acknowledge that so many of the other people who also put uh, incredible creative contribution and other kinds of contributions when we are here. Um, Josh Park, who wrote the original book that the whole thing was based on. Yeah. And Wade, if you, if you're here. There you go. Um, and then Kevin Atkinson, our DP, is here. Wade is Wade, when I say Craig Benjamin, our composer. Uh, two of our three amazing editors, Robert Nassau, Jamie Gross. Wade. And we have other group members. Did Jonah, did Jonah make it? Jonah Markowitz, our amazing production designer. I don't know, I think he's here. Oh. Um, and our rest of our whole team, Trish Hadley, and there's, a, a, there's a, many, many others of you in the audience that um, I'm not remembering, but it's, it was a huge, incredible group. It was a long process. It began uh, nearly 10 years ago um, when uh, Colton and Mood brought the book to Peter Principato, Peter Principato, John Stern. They all invited me to be a part of it, and eventually we made our way to Ted, and Ted gave us the vote of confidence to say, hey, let's tell this story. And then all of these actors, every single one of them brought more than just their brilliant performances. They all had ideas that we uh, uh, shamelessly stole from them and um, put in the movie, and everybody made it better in a million ways. Okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> I just, I had never heard really, I knew, I remember his name from watching Caddyshack 10,000 times as a kid, but I really didn't know his story or who he was until it was introduced to me by producers, and I was like, wow, this is somebody who, we don't know his name, and yet he really invented in so many ways the kind of comedy that I grew up on and influenced me and evolved into the comedy that we all uh, consume in this country. So I thought it was a story that absolutely gives context and, um, uh, to, to comedy today, but also I just thought it was an amazing story about two guys who are friends and uh, moved me. Uh, we have a lot of people up here, not terribly too much time, so let's go right to questions. Go ahead. Hands in the air. Over there, all the Hi. Um, so I have a question for all the cast. One of the things I enjoyed most about this movie is its self-awareness of being selected about true events to make a stronger narrative. So, uh, with that in mind, how did that factor into your interpretations of these real people? Do people hear that question? No. <laughs> Sorry, my throat's fucked. He's saying, uh, because we're being selective about what facts we tell, how did that affect your approach to the material, something yeah. like that? That's it. It was a very intelligent question. I didn't get a word of it. <laughs> give, somebody give him a mic, maybe give him a chance. Up? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Also, and then, he said it was a question for all the cast, so maybe each cast member okay. can talk for 15 minutes on <laughs> This is more intimate than I was prepared to be. Um, so, <laughs> what I love most about this movie is how it was so selective and self-aware about how it sort of begged true events to form a stronger narrative. So, how did that affect each of your interpretations of all these real people? <laughs> Who wants to give a shot at that? Anybody? Well, actually, I have a mic. I'll, I'll start it and I'll pass it to you. Um, I had actually a leg up on some of these people in that I knew almost all of them, and those that are still with us, uh, I still know. So as far as how you would interpret them, it, the only thing for me was it was quite weird to see somebody else playing somebody I know. Like, I know what you are, and you're not him, but you are you, but I also know you. So it was really... 
It was really fucking nuts. Okay, here's Emmy. I'm not gonna follow that. <laughs> like I, 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 I think that the self-awareness thing really started with the genius writing of uh, Boot and Colton, yeah. everybody. And, uh, and it wasn't just a straight story about uh, uh, an amazing guy that nobody knew and then he died. It was very self-aware. I think it pointed out uh, how many people and how much cocaine was being done back then. And uh, clearly they demonstrated how all comedy changed in just a couple of years. And then Martin was in Clue. And I don't know what's up with that. So, uh, but I, I think it's also, a, I mean, I don't know why I'm still talking, but uh, I would like you to come back and have more questions. But it also shows how David Wayne uh, wrangled uh, all these uh, uh, people that um, are obviously uh, ridiculously talented, except for you. And I'm sorry that's not going well for your career, but, um, <laughs> but uh, it shows that David, and he's totally uninterested in my answer for why he's looking at his phone. So uh, it's cool. I was, our, you know, the, our main character, Will Forte, unfortunately, cannot be here tonight. And so I was thinking he might. Uh, Send him a message. He, he said he, he just texted saying he wishes he was here and uh, love to all of you. And he might send an audio before this is over. We'll see. Well, let's get another question. Hands high. Right here. David. Did the uh, food fight at the funeral really happen? Uh, the question was about the food fight at the funeral. Yeah, we, we, we took all day to shoot, too. <laughs> Next question. Chevy was thrilled that 
uh, Doug Kenny was getting the due that he was finally uh, deserving. Uh, and because so many people from that time, as we all know, exploded in their careers. Uh, and so uh, Chevy was very thrilled about that. And uh, then I called him last week and to let him know that it was done and uh, it was it was good. And uh, despite your confusion, and uh, and then I said I would send him a link to the film, and he said, "Great, what's a link?" And uh, which is perfect. Yes, I sent him some sausages. And uh, thank you, Martin Mull is my writer. And so, so I, I uh, I'm not sure how your what you're saying about how you're confused about the, his portrayal, but. Oh, but uh, it's still not clear what happened. I, I don't think, I personally don't think we're taking a, a, a take on Chevy here. We're just t showing you some of what happened. And I think uh, the events specifically directly around Doug's death are not clear. And Chevy wasn't there, he had nothing to do with it. But, um, and that's what I would say. I don't, I don't think we're like, we don't have a take on it. Uh, we have time for two more questions. Come on back here. Okay. Yeah. Can I get a vote on like everyone on stage? Was it airplane or a Caddyshack? <laughs> <laughs> airplane? Caddyshack. Make it done. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Clue again. <laughs> Another question. Oh great. When covering so much ground, clearly you have to cut some things that you love. What was something that you had to cut that didn't make it to the film that people would love hearing about? What things were cut? Yeah, a lot of people on the stage were like, "Why did you cut?" Uh, the, the, in a, especially in a movie like this, there's um, so much, you know, because it's a biopic and it's somewhat modular. That we shot a lot of stuff and learned about what the spine of the movie was over and over again, and evolved through the shooting and then all the way through post production and with some pickup shoots. And so, we shot tons of interesting stuff that I don't. I personally feel like we've landed the correct good movie, but uh, yes, there's so many things that in the vacuum are awesome and worth you know mentioning. But uh, particularly a lot of the performances uh, that we did in a recreation of the Lemmings live show and in the radio show, uh, in particular. Anything else come to mind that anyone wants to mention? All right. And we're going to time for 16 more questions. <laughs> and we got it going. Just a little Hi. Um, so many of this wonderful cast of this great background in comedy, in improv, and in writing all that stuff. So, like, how much of your days were improv versus, like, script lines? How much was improv versus scripted? Anyway. Uh, uh, sure, I'll take that. Uh, this, was, this was a really tricky one because there was a lot of great improvisers, people who have whole schools of improvisation. <laughs> and, 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 sag award, ensemble, which is, you know, diluted, but it's still, it's something. But, uh, you know, I think there was, a, there was a tremendous pressure because we're playing real people who, and we're pitching real ideas that they pitched, some of which are uncomfortable to say out loud these days. But uh, there's, there's some improvisation, but I, I feel like we were a little bit more meticulous than we would have been if we were just making a movie about a bunch of coops or making a movie about the state or the UCB. I don't think we would have felt the the onus to be so irreverent. Right, right. And not say uh, like say, that. I say that uh, the, the Lord of the Rings puns were written by Dylan. All the bad Lord of the Rings puns. <laughs> Thank uh, David Wayne and all the cast. Will Forte. Will Forte. Check out the reboot of Clue.